Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrostevo, and it's finally time for week five in the Lithio Battle Association. Now, since we're finally back to uploading at a semi-regular schedule here, I am out of town as this is going up, but I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, if it's not Saturday yet, I don't know when I'm going to schedule this. Come see me at the Pokemon World Center on Sunday. Or not Sunday, Saturday. If it's not Saturday, I'm going to be there on Saturday and in the morning. Anyways, though, this week, an epic battle of epic proportions against one of the teams that I was most worried about going up against in the LBA is up against the Bristol Bidus. And they, of course, are coached by Eric or Ashton Akai on Twitter. So I'll leave his information in the description. And as far as the matchup goes, he had access to such monsters as Greninja, Victini, Togekiss, Mega Lopunny. He could have even used Gothitelle with Shadow Tag, Salamence, Rotom, Moform. Really hard to break walls like Registeel and Golbat. No big deal. Just really, really terrible, terrible things to face, generally. So how do we prepare for this? We brought a Specs Garbodor to this battle. We also brought two Scarfers, Cobalion and Mamoswine. I was just really, really worried about Law Punny, and I wanted to make sure. It's nice having Cobalion Scarf because it resists Fake Out. Um, and then that way, even if he gets a Power Up Punch or two off, I still have that option to just come in and close combat in him in the face. Uh, we also have a Double Dance Porygon Z with Nasty Plot and Agility. Because if I can get up one of those, I can hit his team pretty hard. And then we have as well a Dragon Dance for Alligator and an offensive supporting Whimsicott with Stun Spore. Uh, Whimsicott with Stun Spore is pretty nice here outside of his Rotom form because things on his team don't really like being paralyzed. Now, as far as the matchup goes, generally I was expecting him to start off with either his Rotom or the Law Punny. The early fake out is hard to pass up as far as a free Mega Evolution goes. And if he starts off with Rotom, then it probably means that it's Scarfed. So I really wanted to deny him the ability to set up rocks if he had those. And so I just start off with my uh, um, Whimsicott here. I went for Taunt, seeing if he would hard switch into something, um, not wanting to take a hit. But since he just went for a Volt Switch, I was like, maybe he's Scarfed. And then I realized I could have just attacked him outright to find out if he was Scarfed or not. But that's okay. Uh, spoilers, turns out that he has a Yachi Berry this whole time, so he does a great job of bluffing the Scarf. I just go directly out into Cobalion here. I figured he'd go for Ice Beam. If he had it, he also might go for uh, Hidden Power of some sort, just to hit my um, Whimsicott. And I didn't want to stay in there, so I just go for, his, to go for the Volt Switch in order to get some switching priority. Because I didn't think he wanted to take a hit, he also might have had a Sash. Now right here, I was 100% sure in, in my own weird brain that he was going to taunt me to stop my Stealth Rocks from going up. And so I went for Icicle Crash. I knew that Registeel could have switched in, and so I was really close for going for Earthquake. But I thought he would just taunt me, and so I didn't want to miss the goal bat if he did taunt me. Um, and this is terrible because if I had gone for Earthquake, we are in a 2-8 KO scenario. But now I have to switch out into Garbodor. And on top of that, he knows that I'm probably Scarfed because of the way that I switch out. Otherwise, I would have just gone for Earthquake as he still up the Stealth Rocks. Uh, that's not terrible, because now I can go for a Specs Focus Blast on Registeel and miss it. But if I had hit it, if I had hit it, that would have been a clean 2 hit KO if I had hit it. Uh, we're going to try Focus Blast again, because why the heck not? Um, we're going to go again. We miss again. Granted, it would have done completely negligible damage to uh, Golbat, but I would have done something. I would have gotten that nice scintillating feeling when you hit something that's a really focused compression part of you know, attacking. That's okay. Then I get paralyzed. That's cool. Can we please just hit a focus blast? Now at this point, I can't switch in anything because I don't want to get super fanged. So let's just hit a focus blast. Yes, you did it, Garbodor. You hit a focus blast and it did basically no damage. That's okay. Let's just keep doing it. It's working out great. We're just gonna keep on using focus blast. And he actually brings in Rotom there. He overpredicted a little bit. I think he thought that I was going to save the Garbodor because uh, he at that point he knew that I was Specs, but um, he let me get all that extra damage on the Rotom, which was fantastic. Now, since he did go for Volt Switch, now I get to see what he goes out into. I didn't know what I wanted to take the attack here. I decided to go out into Whimsicott here to scare him out back into Rotom, hopefully, because I knew he would go for Fake Out. Not a big deal. I can get that HP back with Giga Drain, which is why I chose Whimsicott over something like Cobalion. Um, and... Um, 
I can just get that HP back. And so I went for Stun Spore and I missed the Golbat, which sucks. I would have loved Golbat's pretty fast. And getting him paralyzed would have been excellent. Now we have to switch out again. Not only does that mean more stealth rock damage, but I also have to take this Brave Burrow, which because of Cobalion's fighting type, it's going to do neutral damage. And now one of my main checks to this whole team is getting worn down completely unnecessarily. Um, I have to go for Volt Switch. I get a crit, but it doesn't really matter because he can just roost off the damage. I go into Porygon Z here, hoping that he does roost, and he does, which is good. Um, if I can, I was, oh, maybe I should go for a Nasty Plot here, but I did decide to just go ahead and attack. I, I thought he would just stay in and go for Super Fang, but he makes a great play going out into Roida Steel because now I'm gonna get paralyzed. And I could have switched out, but I didn't have anything that I wanted to get paralyzed, really. Um, and I figured, okay, let's just go for the Dark Pulse and maybe I'll flinch. I don't get that either, and then we also reveal just how bulky his Registeel is, and we get paralyzed. So that was just bad news bears all around. I'm seeing I have a new queue this weekend, so that's why I'm thinking of bad news bears. Um, if you're under, I don't know, 16, you probably shouldn't look that up. But anyways, though, um, we're just going to keep going for Dark Pulse. He actually goes out into Rotom here. Again, I think he expected me to switch out. But now that Rotom is out of the way, I can go for Stun Spore with Impunity. And at the time, I was thinking, okay, good. I got one of his Scarfers out of the way that I can outspeed Scarf Mamoswine. But he wasn't Scarfed. So that didn't end up mattering. Now, as he goes for High Jump Kick there, I knew at the range of HP Whimsicott was at. After it rocks, I couldn't take a High Jump Kick. So now I get to come back in and threaten him with a Stun Spore. He goes back out. Finally, get the Golbat paralyzed. If I had paralyzed it earlier... Um, I actually don't have, I didn't have Giga Drain on Whimsicott, I had Psychic, uh, Moonblast, Taunt, and Stun Spore. Um, but since I was in that position, I actually just ended up knocking off, because that was a little bit of a YOLO move. I really wanted to get rid of the uh, Eevee Light on it. And now that the Eevee Light is gone, I can come in, hopefully, with Feraligator and set up, but holy crap, the Brave Bird does a lot of damage. Did not see that coming. I thought he would do so, so much less damage than he did. But if he could just get paralyzed, or as he actually ends up doing, misclicks. He misclicks on Roost when he was just going to go for another Brave Bird and put me in the fake out range. I'm okay with that, because without the EVLI, he can't take a plus one Ice Punch. So fantastic. And now he goes out into Law Punny. He can go for fake out, but I actually have a pretty decent HP investment on Feraligator. I only put enough speed to outspeed Law Punny at plus one. And so the rest just went into HP. And that means I can take a fake out, go for another waterfall, and that means Registeel is finally going to get taken down by two waterfalls. Thank goodness, this thing was, it should have been gone so much, just, just even an earthquake or focus, it should have been gone a lot earlier in this battle. Just a monolith of annoyance in the way that he played so well with it. Anyways though, another fake out to my face, can I take it? No, no, that was a little bit of a damage roll there though. I had a chance of living that, um, which it, since he doesn't have quick attack would have been pretty huge if I had lived it. But now I bring out Cobalion, which is a huge red flag to him that I'm scarfed. But fortunately for me, it doesn't matter that he knows that because all he has left is Cure in Black, Greninja, and Law Punny, all of which fall to a close combat. So we're just gonna stay in here, go for a close combat. He brings back out Law Punny, and I can take Fake Out for days. I have plenty of HP for Fake Out, but unfortunately for me, he gets a critical hit which scared the crap out of me because uh, it did so much damage for it being resisted. I just stayed in and went for another Scarf Close Combat. I knew if he brought in his Curum, I'd just get to outspeed it no matter what because there's no way he can, even if he has a Scarf, I'm still faster. And that's what made Cobalion such a great Pokemon to Scarf against his team. Um, my co-coach and I both arrived at that assumption there when we were team building. Uh, I actually almost didn't scarf Mamoswine. I ended up doing it just as a secondary check to La Pony there. Um, and it's a scarf adamant Mamoswine. So I had a really good chance of KOing it with Earthquake from full HP. But it is, I think it was like a 90% chance to KO. So there's a chance it didn't work. Because of that 90% though, I do go out to Whimsicott first and go for Stun Spore just to raise the chances that I'm able to hit um, the damage rolls that I need. But we get a little bit of Revenge Para hacks here. And he just goes down to a Moonblast, Pixie Plate boosted to the face. So that's going to be a 2-0 victory for the Eternity City Enders. 
Very, very haxy match. Good gravy. But that was still a fun battle overall. My only uh, annoyance is that I just suspect Scarbador could have done so much more. It was his time to take off his sunglasses and just shine. But um, obviously, I don't think my opponent would have liked that very much. So more power to him. Uh, but I did enjoy that battle. And I hope I do get to battle Eric again in the future. For week number six, we're actually going up against the Los Angeles Nitty Kings yet again. That is just one of those teams where I just I keep having battles uh, against um, JJ, and they're always awesome. So I will actually might have that battle while I'm out of town, so that'll be interesting. And if not, I'll have it when I get back. But look forward to that, because he has some pretty powerful Pokemon on his roster too. In the meantime, hope you guys have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.